Trade shows are a lot of work to cover. Now, as many of you probably know, we've covered the NAB show here for years now. And of course, this is the place to be if you are remotely connected to pre-production, production, post-production post in any way, shape, or form. If you like cameras, lenses, lighting, rigs, you name it, it is here, you will find it. Now, how can we cover everything in such a short amount of time? Well, the answer is, it's not everything. We do have to pick and choose. There are many challenges when it comes to covering any trade show. The technical challenges, the logistical challenges, and of course, the creative challenges. And that comes down to the kind of story you're gonna tell with the very limited amount of time you have. Creativity, it's the lifeblood of media. So how's it all work? Well, moving fast is paramount. It is the most important thing in event coverage. There are, are countless moments that just happen out of nowhere. And you need to be eagle-eyed and fast acting enough to actually catch them. It could be anything like the excitement and burst of cheers from a crowd outside, or a new product has suddenly hit the stage, or you just need extensive close-ups and coverage of a hot new product that's on display, much like you can see behind me. Oh, and let's not forget, there's all the research you need to do too. But follow me and I'll show you some of the decisions that we have to make during every trade show. And perhaps you can take some cues on the gear and technical considerations of ours, along with the logistical considerations and the structure and creative process that we've devised along the way. Let's start with what I know you all wanna see, the gear. So everything that we do is in service of making us fast, like I said before, and so that kind of automatically dictates a few of the things that we bring with us. Everything though has to maintain a professional broadcast quality. So our rig here is pretty simple. Uh, it's, uh, there's a few elements here I'll go into, but our, at the core of it is the Canon C70. That's been our camera of choice for a few years now. Now the big reason I would say is because of course, it's got built-in professional XLR audio. They are mini XLRs, to be fair. And also, the other big deal is that it's got built-in ND filters. And I cannot stress how important those are, especially when moving fast. A few of the other benefits that keep this thing light and mobile and inexpensive is the fact that it's SD media only, the batteries last a very long time, and even though I wish it did have an EVF, the LCD screen is very nice and very accurate, so it doesn't really require us to have any external monitoring solutions. Now you'll notice on the front here we have the Canon RF 24 to 105 millimeter f4L. In the future, who knows, maybe we will get that nice f2.8. But for now, this is our go-to lens for events like this because you do want as much reach as you can get with a constant aperture. Light is pretty good inside. The bigger issue is just the inconsistency of the light, but it usually is enough that f4 isn't an issue. And outside, of course, we're using those ND filters. Now you'll notice also that we've rigged this out on the outside with a cage from Tilta. Now this is pretty bare bones. We don't have too much going on on the cage itself. You can see we have a rosette here that we're not even using for a grip. The main reason we decided to use this was because we wanted an extra cold shoe for our audio receiver here. Now we have a double audio solution going on. The primary audio here is the receiver here. This is the Sennheiser EW series. Uh, I obviously have the transmitter on me. Now this goes straight into the side of the camera via mini XLR. We have a specific cable from Condor Blue just to get us that 3.5 straight into the camera. No adapters necessary, so no XLR to mini XLR. Now up here, we have another Sennheiser microphone. This one's a classic in the broadcasting space. This is the MKH416. This is a shotgun microphone. Now, in all honesty, this is more of a backup solution for us right now because uh, it is very noisy in these environments. But in this case, um, we're using it just as a backup. It's a safety option. Um, great microphone, by the way, but we also have it here going straight from XLR to mini XLR, so no adapter necessary. Now, one cool feature I actually didn't even realize was possible until we were shooting another video is that these are magnetically stackable. I did know that these are magnetic on the bottom to these plates here to hold them in place. Very nice, but what I didn't realize is that they also can do it on top, so you can stack two, three, even four if you want to, I guess. And now below this is a monopod. I know they're not the best solution, but they are quick and easy to set up. They require no balancing like a gimbal might, and it allows us to quickly adapt and change the setup as we need to on the fly. And speaking of stabilization, another note, that's also why we're using this lens. This has optical stabilization. The camera notably does not, but that's fine because we're covered here. But everything really begins with careful preparation. First, we determined how big of a team we were bringing. 
With a crew of seven, we could split up presenting, shooting, and editing roles in rotation, with three of us primarily acting as presenters. This meant that as videos were shot, we would eventually have multiple editors working on videos simultaneously. We'll get to the post side of things in a bit, so let's just look at what a crew of seven translates to in terms of gear preparation. Now in our camera bag, we've got three Canon C70s, two of which were fully outfitted as I showed before. The third camera we've left bare bones strictly to be used for BTS capture, much of which you're seeing here. Don't forget the audio gear I mentioned. We also have three 128GB SDXC cards per camera, giving us some backup options just in case of failure. There are two batteries per camera and two chargers. And we also have some extra mini XLR cables just for backup. Our second bag is largely dedicated to post-production and it was a little more complicated. We packed four M3 MacBook Pros that were equally outfitted with our typical editing software, graphics packages, music, and more. A Blackmagic 8TB cloud storage unit providing ample space for our footage through the convention. This Ubiquiti Unify 10 gig switch gives everyone fast access to the cloud storage. And a portable 5G modem gives us our own internet access and syncs up deliverables from the Blackmagic storage to our New York offices. We bring power supplies for every device, including laptops, six ethernet cables, four hyperdrive USB Type-C to 2.5G RJ45 adapters, and two Samsung T7 drives, just in case. Okay, enough preparation, let's get shooting. Ahead of time, we've planned out the general themes of the videos we're going to make, and in the days leading up to the event, we've kept our eyes peeled for any press releases and announcements about the newest products to hit the show floor. At every booth we cover, the presenters do the legwork of researching the features of the latest products and chat with the company reps on the floor to find out the key details. Meanwhile, the shooters they've partnered with capture B-roll of the booth, the products, and the surrounding crowd, making sure to capture key functionality and features of whatever item is on display. We need that footage because, hey, we all make mistakes. So I chatted about Blackmagic's new cameras. <coughs> I'll just die real quick, don't mind me. They're editing. Where do I begin here? Our editing setup is optimized to keep footage offloading and access as painless as possible. At the heart of it really is the Blackmagic Cloud Store, which provides extremely fast solid state storage to every editor at once. It has a 10 gig ethernet connection, which we've run through the unified 10 gig switch. Now, technically each computer is only connected to the switch at 2.5 gig, but that's still plenty for the footage we're working with. The beauty of this setup is that one of the computers we've brought with us is dedicated to just ingesting footage and generating proxy files. Now, despite this being black magic, we've actually stuck with Adobe Premiere here to lean on its production workflow that can nest every editor's individual projects while acting as a single resource for all the footage we've collected through the show. This means no editor has to dump their own footage and there's no need to swap cards or drives if one person has the B-roll that another editor needs. The last piece of the post-production puzzle is the 5G modem we've brought with us. The Blackmagic Cloud Store can automatically sync folders between services such as Google Drive and Dropbox. A computer doesn't even have to be connected for the sync to take place. So that's about it. Everything from the planning to the gear prep to the execution on the day of is all in service of telling a story about the events that are happening around us. And NAB is, of course, one of our favorite places to do just that. Now, we like to keep things portable and fast, and it's interesting, especially at NAB, being what it is, because you can really see all the technology here on display around us. Some of you probably know that, you know, five, 10 years ago, especially more beyond that, that it was not always like this. It was not this easy, it was not this compact. And this is only recently possible. To see it develop and then integrate it into the storytelling process is very interesting, needless to say. So anyway, let us know what your setup is, if you're covering trade shows at all, or if we've maybe given you some inspiration. Let us know in the comments below. My name is Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next year.